Today I'm going to show you how I created this little car animation from scratch. So if you're a beginner and you want to learn car animation in Blender, this video is for you. Let's start with the car. If you need one, you can download my C63 AMG for free. It's already rigged, so ready for animation. You could also use a car from the transportation add-on or a car of your own. It's up to you. In Blender, let's create a new scene and delete the light and the cube. Then you import your car, file, append, select your car, append, you select everything by pressing A and append again. If you're using my 663, it should be the same. If your car is not rigged, check this video. I show you how to do so and how to get free cars along the way. Select everything starting with WGT, then M, move to a new collection. Name this collection something like ND for not needed. Exclude it and hide it. Select the rig, right click, select higher key, and M again, move to a new collection and name it my car. For the animation part, first let me show you how to do it with the launch control add-on as it is now my main rig for car animation. The link to this add-on will be in the description. Then I will show you how to do it with a free alternative. So to rig your car with the launch control add-on, you press N, you go on launch control and you press rig vehicle. And voila! Yeah, with one click your car is ready for animation. I can even press spacebar to show you the result. Everything is automatically animated, the wheels rotation, the steering, and I'll show you how to apply the physics. Before we start, let's extend the ground. So you click on this plane, modifier properties, add modifier, array. In factor X, you put zero and minus one on Y because we are going in this direction. Then on count, three will be enough for now. Now let's modify our path, this little tube. This is what defines the trajectory of our car. So you click on it and you go in edit mode by pressing tab on your keyboard. Here you select those points like me and you press delete on your keyboard, vertices, numpad period to zoom in and you select the last point of the path. G then Y to move it on the Y axis just a little bit, maybe something like that. From there with the last point selected you press E and Y to extrude it and that will create a new control point. And you repeat this operation one more time. E and Y. So now you should have three control points. If we select here, so that's one, that's two, and that's three. Let's select the second one and J and X to move it on the X axis. Something like that. And that we create our turn. You select the last point and E and Y to extrude again. You press seven on your numpad and spacebar to test your animation. As you can see, those turns are a little bit too hard, so we need to smooth everything. You select this point and S to scale, and then you select also this point and S to scale. If necessary, you can move the control points with G and rotate them with R. When you are happy with the result, you press N to bring the menu and you click on Update Driving Path. Now for the speed of our car, you go in Manual Gearbox, Advanced Animation, and you check speedometer. Yay, now we can check the speed live. Let's modify it to suit our project. You click on the rig and you go in pause mode by pressing Ctrl and Tab or by using this drop down list. In pause mode, you select that wheel and let's check the animation. As you can see, my car is stopping way too early. Let's suppose we want 200 frames for our project. So we are going to move this keyframe to the frame 200 like this. And let me update the project to 200. With the wheel selected, you go in item, you go on the frame 200 and you update the Z rotation until the car is roughly where you want it to be at the end of your animation. So something like that for me. In keying, active keying set, you select location, rotation and scale. And on the viewport on frame 200, you press I on your keyboard to update the Z rotation. Now if you check the animation, my car is correctly stopping at the end of the animation. Let's check the speed. If the speed is not what you expected, if it's too slow, you need to drive to a further point by updating the keyframe 200. If it's too fast, you need to drive closer, something like that. But don't forget to press I on your keyboard to update the keyframe once you change the value. I want my car to be a little bit faster, so on frame 200, I will update the Z rotation, something like that, and I press I to update the keyframe. 
Personally, for this project, I wanted something between 90 and 100 km, so that's perfect for me. Now for the physics, it's all automated by launch control. You click on the add-on, you select your preset, for example road car, and you press apply physics, and boom, the physics are applied. And if you want to fine tune the effects, you go in physics post FX. And you can play with the different values live without the need to redo all the calculations until you have something you like. If I input high values, here you can clearly see that the car is moving all around at the turns. For my case, I went for those values. And that's it, this is how I use the launch control for this simple animation. Of course, it can do much more, but we'll check that in another video. Now, let's see how to animate the car with the Rigo car add-on, which is totally free. From here, we are going to create the path. So, Shift A, Curve, and Path, G and X to move it on the X axis. With the path selected, you press N, Item, and you write minus 90 degrees for the Z rotation. Let's check if we are in the correct direction. So you press tab on your keyboard to go in edit mode. And here you activate the normals. The arrows are in the right direction. Go back in object mode with tab. Let's scale the path a bit with S. Something like that. Select the rig and go in pause mode with control tab. Select the bone constraint properties, the blue one. Add bone constraint. Follow path, and here you select your path. And let's move the path in this collection. We want our car to follow this curve, so let's check follow curve. We are going in the minus y direction, so let's update the forward axis to minus y. Let's represent the points on the path in a range from 0 to 1 by checking fixed position here. 0 is the start of the path, and if I move to 1 now, Normally, it should go at the end of the path. Our car is not on the curve, so let's fix that. You go in Object Properties, and you put 0 in all the location values. Press 1 on your keyboard to go in Front View, and let's lift the car a bit, so you select the rig, G and Z. Okay, now our car is perfectly aligned with the curve. Let's test. We go back in Bone Properties, and now 0 to 1 is working perfectly fine. To test the animation, you go in Keying, Active Keying Set, and Location, Rotation, and Scale. On frame 1, click on the blue rig, set the offset factor to 0, and with the cursor on it, you press I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe, here. Now we go on frame 200, we move the offset factor to 1, and we insert a new keyframe by pressing I. Let me update the project to 200. On the timeline, you press A to select all the keyframes, right-click, Interpolation mode and linear because we want our car to have a constant speed. So let's test the animation now. Yay, it's working fine. Now we can design our path. If it's not already the case, go back in object mode with control tab, select the path and switch to edit mode with tab. Select the last point and E and Y to extrude on the Y axis, something like that. And repeat this operation one more time. So E and Y to extrude again. Select this middle point and G and X to move it. That will create our turn. And with the last point selected, E and Y again to extrude one more time. If you want, you can move the points with G and Y to move it on the Y axis and G and X to move it on the X axis. And you press spacebar to test your animation. Here I found that my car is a little bit too slow. So to speed up your car, you just have to create a longer path so here, you select the last point, G and Y, to make it longer. Okay, now I like it. When you're happy with the result, you go back in Object Mode with Tab. With your path selected, Control A and Apply All Transform. You press 1 on your keyboard, you select your car and Numpad Period to zoom. You select the rig just here and G and Z to put it on the ground. Now to bake the wheels rotation and the steering. There is a bug with the Rigger Car add-on and Blender 3.4. But this guy found a solution, but it's not committed yet. So while we wait for the patch, I created a fixed version that you can download from my drive. The link will be in the description. To install the add-on, you go in Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and you look for the file Rigger Car Master Fix that you just downloaded, and Install Add-on. Then you have to be sure that the add-on is activated with this checkbox. In Object Mode, you press N to see your different add-ons, 
and you select the rig a car add-on. If you don't have the add-on appearing here, you just have to select the rig first and then the add-on will appear. You click on bake car steering, okay, and bake wheels rotation, okay. So it will create all the animation for the steering and the wheels rotation for us. Let me show you the result by parenting a camera. You don't have to do this. It's only to see the animation. And now you can see that everything is animated correctly for us. For the physics, you have to do it manually by animating the rig controls. Let's do an example. So maybe here, you want your car body to roll on the side a bit. You select the rig and you go in pause mode with control and tab. You select this control which is controlling the car body. As you can see, when I press G, I can move my car body. Just before the turn, maybe around here, you press I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe at the default position. So to have a better view, let's click here, summary, and you search for suspension. Okay, so now we can see the suspension keyframes. And then in the middle of the turn, let's exaggerate the effect so you can clearly see what's going on. So G and X, and I will move my car like this, and I press I again to insert a keyframe. Then a few frames later, I want my car to go back in the default position, so I will copy this keyframe just here. Now let's check the result. Perfect, the car is rolling on the side. And you can do this uh, kind of animation with all the different controls on the rig. And this is how you simulate the physics with this add-on. You have to animate the controls manually. But at least it's doing exactly what you want and it's free. The downsides are it's time consuming when you want to simulate many physics and it's calculated automatically with a launch control. So the physics are accurate and realistic. When here, you have to judge by eye. Okay, the car animation is now done. Let's set up our scene. I did many videos on how to create a realistic road. You can check them if you want. But in this video, I will simply give you the road already done with some assets for free so you can follow along. All those assets are coming from my city pack and here is a quick shout out. Today, I'm very excited to announce that I have released my own city pack on the Blender market. I designed this pack for Blender users with low-end computers and users who want light assets for their animations and still compositions. The objects are realistic enough for beautiful animations and at the same time very very light for your computer to render and to manipulate in the viewport. By the way, I created my last animation using only elements from this pack. There are 34 buildings, 11 skyscrapers with an easy light system, and more than 40 city props like roads, trashes, street lamps, boxes, etc. Of course, there are free alternatives out there, but if you like my work and if you want to support my channel, it's a great way to do so. So you open the file with the free assets and you just copy paste the road. I'll go in material preview mode here. You select your road, N, and in item, I will make a rotation on the Z axis of 90 degrees. G and shift Z to lock the Z axis and you can move your road freely. I will put mine just right here. With the road selected, you go in modifier properties, add modifier, array, you change the factor X to minus one and the count to something like 20. Let's play the animation. If you experience this issue like me, where the car is going out of the road, you just select your path, you go in edit mode by pressing tab, you select this point and G and X to move the car on the road. Perfect. And then tab again to go back in object mode. Here you select the rig, N, you go in a rig a car, and because we changed the path, we are going to clear baked animation and bake the animation again. Bake car steering, okay and bake wheels rotation. Now let's animate our camera. There were four shots in my project. We'll focus on this one because if you know how to do it, you will know how to create the others. Move your cursor on this corner until you have this crosshair and drag it. In this panel, you go in camera mode by pressing zero on your numpad. Press N to hide this window, control and middle mouse button and you move up until this view is filling the panel. Then you press N again, you go in view and you check camera to view untick show overlay and show gizmo. Press T to hide the tools. In the output properties, change the resolution to 1920 by 817 for the cinematic ratio. Click on your camera, go on the camera icon, and here change the focal length to 35 for a wider view. In viewport display, change the pass power out to 1. 
activate the depot field, change the f-stop to 1 to blur the background and put 5 in blades. Let's create a focus point, so shift A, MT, plane axis, move this focus point in the first collection here and name it focus, and move it to the back of your car, so G and shift Z, something one right here, you can press 7 on your numpad to go in the top view and G shift Z again. Okay, now it's placed correctly. With the empty selected, press shift and click on the body of your car and control P to parent it to the body of your car, object keep transform. Now, if I press spacebar, the focus point is moving with the car. And thanks to this method, it's easy to change the camera focus point just by animating this empty. Click on the camera, go back in the camera icon and in deep of field, for the focus object, select the focus. Go in frame number one. If it's not already the case, select your camera and let's update the view to have the camera behind the car. When you're happy with your camera selected, you press I to insert a keyframe. And if you don't see the keyframe, don't forget to delete any values that you have put in the search bar. And once again, don't forget to have the camera to view selected, otherwise we won't be able to change the framing of your camera. From there, you can continue to place your camera wherever you feel. Just change the frame, place your camera and press I to add the keyframe. When you have created two keyframes, select those and right click interpolation mode linear. It's very important if you don't want to mess your camera animation. Don't worry if the camera movements are not smooth, we'll deal with that later. Okay, now we have our camera setup, let's build the environment. For this project, I duplicated the road, so you select the road, Alt D and G and X to move the road around here. And then I added some barriers, which are coming from my city pack. They are also included in the blend file I'm giving for free. Like the road, you just copy and paste them in your scene and you array them until the end like we did for the road. And then for the sides, I created a plane with some grass scattered on it. I used the botanic add-on to do that. If you don't have the botanic add-on, let me show you how to easily do that. First, you add a plane, shift A, mesh plane. If you don't have the botanic add-on, you can go on Sketchfab to download grass chunks for free. This one, for example, I will put the link in the description. And let me spawn one with the botanic add-on. When you have your grass on your scene, you just move it on the side and be sure to have your grass in one collection. Then you click on your plane, you click on particle properties, plus you select hair, then in render, render as, you select collection, instance collection, you select the collection where you have your grass, you check advance, here you check rotation, and orientation for me, global X. You press 1, so on the side view it's easier to adjust the scale. Something like that. You can also add some scale randomness. And here I will change the number of particles, until you have something you like. From there you can change the size of the plane, and item, and here. You can do whatever you want, but don't forget to adjust the number of particles if you change the size of your plane. For the texture, because we will not see the plane, you can just use a basic color, so shading. You press new, and in base color, you go for something brown. Something like that. And when I was happy with the result, I just duplicated this plane everywhere. Then I added some trees. Once again, you can check Sketchfab for free trees. For this project, I used the Alpha Trees add-on. Those trees are very, very light because those are just cards, as you can see. But they look like real 3D trees when you render them. And in the Alpha Trees add-on, you have hundreds of different species. So if you have a slow computer or you simply want to scatter millions of trees without killing your render time, it's a good option. And then I added some random assets from my city pack. Those are coming in the new update that I will release really soon. And of course, if you buy the pack now or if you already have it, you will have this update for free. But as usual, I will include in the blend file free assets so you can decorate your scene without buying the pack. I added all those elements in one collection and then I duplicated this collection with Alt D and just move it on the other side. For the cars, I used the transportation add-on and for the animation, I just changed their location with keyframes. 
but I didn't bake the wheels rotation and steering as they were going in a straight line. And I knew that nobody will notice that their wheels are not rotating. And if you don't have the transportation add-on, please check this video where I show you how to grab free cars and how to animate them. For the main lights, I used those street lamps coming from my city pack. And because I love you guys, I will also put those lamps for free in the blend file. Concerning the lights, those are area lights with the power of 30 watts. If you want to duplicate the lights, you select everything, but don't forget to use Alt D to duplicate the lights. So if you change the power here, all the lights will have their power change as well. Then as usual, I added some fog. Let me show you how to do that. Shift A, mesh cube, and you scale the cube to cover the entire scene. Then with the cube selected, you go in shading and you press new. You delete the principal BSDF, shift A, you search for volume, principal volume. You plug the volume to the volume and here I used a density of 0.01. But of course you can change this value to fit your need. I changed the anisotropy to 0.5. At this stage, our render should look something like that. Just for your information, it took 52 seconds for my computer to render this frame. So if you are happy with the result, let's finalize the camera animation. You select your camera, you press A to select all the keyframes. Now is the time to smooth all the camera movements. So here you change to graph editor. With all the keyframes selected, you go in key and simple keyframes. It will create automatic keyframes for us. And now you press Alt to O on your keyboard to smooth everything. And you can do it many times if you want. And now if I check the animation, the camera movements are very smooth. But of course we don't want something that smooth. So we are going to add some shakiness. And for that, we are going to use the camera shakeify add-on. This add-on has been created by Jan Hubert and Nathan Degdahl, so a big thanks to them. But actually the add-on is bugged, so I have fixed this version for 3.4 and you can download this add-on from the description. To install the add-on, you do as usual, edit, print fences, add-ons, install, and you look for the add-on. It should be named camera shakeify master fix. You install the add-on and as usual, you should verify that the add-on is activated with this checkbox. Then you select your camera, you go in the camera icon and here on the bottom, you will have the camera shakeify add-on. You click on plus to add the first effect. Let's check the animation. Okay, cool, we have some shakiness, but let's add one more. And maybe we we'll change this one. So here in this drop down list, you change it, for example, to wedding. Let's see the result. Okay, great. And I think we could add one more. And this time, let's go for Handicam Run. And let's change the influence to something like 0.3. Okay, cool. I like this version. And as usual, you can change those values to suit your need. And now for my render settings, I have everything by default. Only there, I change the max samples to 2048. But once again, according to your machine, you could change this value to something lower or maybe something higher. One very important option as well is to check the motion blur here. For the output, I use PNG. Well, that's it guys. I think I covered everything and I'm very happy that there is now a solution for the Rigo car add-on. If you want me to focus on a specific subject, please ask it in the comment section. If you like my video, it would be great to leave me a like and to subscribe because I have a lot of surprises coming for you. Thanks for watching and I see you soon. Bye bye.